And so we kind of like elevate physical abuse above emotional or verbal abuse when in fact they actually are the same. One has a physical impact and the other has a psychological impact that can take you years, I mean, years to get over. And I think a lot of those because the physical is so prominent and so obvious, we completely miss the verbal and the emotional. And so we kind of like elevate physical abuse above emotional or verbal abuse when in fact they actually are the same. One has a physical impact and the other has a psychological impact that can take you years, I mean, years to get over. And I think a lot of those because the physical is so prominent and so obvious, we completely miss the verbal and the emotional. And, and you know what? This Pastor Adams, right on, brother. And you can see physical. Yeah. See what I'm saying? You yeah. can see the black eye. Come right. on. Right. But what you can't mask is that emotional and that psychological. You can't mask that. And then right. that becomes a triple effect around who? If there's kids involved, if there's kids that are not kids see that. Now they see the changed disposition of the person, the changed attitude. Um, it's, it's a really, really um, everlasting, bad, bad, bad place, place for you to be. That's Can I just add one more thing to this real quick? No, no, go ahead. Let me just add one more thing to this. And I think it it's a, really, we really need to take into consideration that abuse in and of itself, it's something that doesn't happen overnight. This is something that happens gradually through the passage of time. Very good. And the more you become used to it, the more you accommodate it to the yes. point where you don't even recognize that the relationship or the marriage that you're in it's abusive. It's not even functioning as the way that it should be functioning. It's actually become dysfunctional because right. now you've allowed and you've tolerated a level of abuse, whether it be verbal or emotional or physical, to continue to perpetuate itself on you. That's I don't think I don't think Minister Terrell. No. <laughs> well, well, watch this. This is going to tie to what I want to say. There's four men here. Mm-hmm. So that's why a lot of it go on unreported, unreported. Yeah. by men for... Yeah. Whether you 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 unawarely knew it, but men somehow we don't want to come out. We don't want to say it. Right. We don't want to go. You, you mentioned a counselor. I'm not going to see no counselor. I'm a man. I can't reveal this to anybody else. No, so wow. how many of these cases we get that are unreported, whether that's physical, whether that's verbal, that men, they don't report these things. Why? Because we have this stigma that it, it makes us look weak. And, and we minimize them, and that's a detonator to basically spark other issues that become much bigger, much more visible, right? More public, and, and that person implodes, right? So, mm-hmm. so you mentioned something too, Pastor Adam, where the emotional abuse happens also with neglecting or discounting a person's emotional concerns mm-hmm. or feelings, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. so that's critical too, right? Because, okay... Your, your feelings don't matter. And I may not say that, but I never respond to when you express you're having a hard time with something. You, you don't like a certain behavior that I, and I never respond to it, you know, directly. I never change my behavior in that process. So, but, and, and, and I discount it because I never address it, right? And so that emotional abuse to your point, whether it's male or female, it, it, it necessarily, doesn't necessarily get tolerated but it gets to the point where it hasn't been addressed for so long that creates that gap. Yeah. And why do I need to keep bringing you the same thing when you have not changed your behavior? So why would I bring you the same information expecting a, a different response, mm-hmm. right? Sure. And that drives that gap. And then at some point people wake up and says, you don't respect me. You do what you want to do in the marriage. You've cheated on me. Why am I here? Sure. You know, um, Minister Thurman made a point there, and he talked about the unreported cases of domestic mm-hmm. violence, obviously amongst well, domestic abuse, I want to just say domestic violence, but domestic abuse, obviously amongst men more so uh, than women, but it's, un- it's unreported by both. Mm-hmm. The research, I'm going to use one of Pastor Adams' things, uh, the research suggests while around 25% of the population experiences domestic violence, Hmm. Only between two and a half to 15% actually report it. Right. 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 Actually report it. Yeah. And, so, and so what does this do in the marriage now? 
how do we begin the process now? What, what are the effects of this, of domestic abuse, domestic uh, violence in, in, in any way, shape or form? What are the effects of it in a marriage? So, so I'm dealing with a counseling case right now in this situation and without naming names. One time, the first time it happened, it created a apprehension, apprehension to having confrontation. The person, it was the female, the wife that was abused, and it was the first time it happened. And so um, the male, because he didn't go all the way and there was no physical marks, he discounted as, I just grabbed him. But what it created in her was a fearful um, or connection to previous account uh, you know uh, issues with physical abuse mm -hmm. in in her childhood and so what that did it, it created this huge oh i don't even want to have any confrontation and if and if the if the husband raises his voice now the, the wife is like oh I, you know I, you know <laughs> doesn't know what to do with herself and she's trying to get away from the situation mm -hmm. and that that creates this fear in your own home from someone who's supposed to be your, your 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 mate, your 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 husband, your you know your your spouse, yeah. and so th this fear of of confrontation, right? This fear of even dealing with escalating anything, whether it's bills or financial, whatever, it creates this gap and apprehension to communicate the basic things that you need to communicate to a person because gotcha. of that fear that it instills. Gotcha, Pastor Adam. No, I think one of the things that it does is that it it, it severely diminishes your sense of security with your mate because now you feel uh you feel this level of vulnerability to them that makes you open to whatever it is they want to do to you and 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 literally manipulate you to doing anything they want you to do and again this is why i said what i said in terms of it not being something that happens overnight or instantaneous but it's over a period of time that abuse literally conditions you to give up your own self-will or your own volition in terms of doing what you want to do. Now you are under the thrall of somebody else who controls you and manipulates you to do whatever it is they want you to do, you know? And it's important again that, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's traumatizing to live within a situation where abuse is occurring. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Mr. Thurman, you had something you were going to add to that? Yes, mistrust, mm -hmm. mistrust. I can't trust you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't trust you. I've, I, I've, I've given you myself. And when now there's a abuse that's involved, now uh, I, the trust is broken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I, I can't understate that no more. Can't, the, the first time that someone puts hands on somebody, whether that's a male, whether it's a female, Minister Terrell, we are, and all of us are in, are in, are in sequence with that. There's no reason, no reason that anybody should put hands on anybody, especially a male because of, of the sure size and the power that a man had over a woman. I don't care if they went into your phone. I don't care if, if, if they broke up. I don't care if they broke up the uh, you playing PlayStation. I don't care what it was. There is no excuse. Right. And I use phone, uh, Pastor, is because I know cases where that resulted in physical abuse mm -hmm. because wow. the husband tried to use the excuse that, but she had no business, come on y'all, mm -hmm. going yeah. in my phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they make those excuses. So now trust is broken and I can't trust you when those things have, have, have been violated. Yeah. When, when you mentioned that, I just let me just cut in real quick. When you mentioned that, that was exactly part of the conversation that I had with this couple. And what I, what I said to them, I said, if the person approaches the violation of their, their item, their personal item greater than the offense, then there's something really wrong in the relationship, yes, right? That's right. The, 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 the phone, okay, I get it. There, you, you have a certain level of, of, of privacy amongst you that you've agreed to or whatever, or just tacitly understood. But if the offense is minimized and the phone is maximized, there's something that there's a bigger, there's a bigger issue. There. Absolutely. I think that, well, I think what that actually does is it alludes into two other things as well. 
uh, that I think need to be paid attention to in this process. One is the loss of self-worth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, mm -hmm. By the person that is being victimized, uh, mm -hmm. be it physically or verbally, you know, verbally mm -hmm. and emotionally, yeah. uh, that there is a loss of self-worth because if, 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 if this person will treat me this way, mm -hmm. then what am I really worth then? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what, what happens uh, when the person who was supposed to protect you yes, has right. now become your victimizer? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. and there's also a sense of hopelessness. Mm -hmm. uh, you lose hope in a situation like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have anything better now. We don't have any better days to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Because once that trust has been violated in that physical, emotional, verbal way, that is so hard to regain, you know, that, that, that I can't trust you not to fly off the handle. Mm. Treat me as though I am a stranger. Right. That's good. You know, when That's I good. go to sleep at night, I can't trust that you won't come in from a bad day at this, that, or the other and take out your frustration on me. So now I got to pray that you had a good day at work every day. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thanks, wow. Yes. Because you're supposed mm -hmm. to come home and yeah. take that out on me. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's male or female. Yeah. yeah. You're subject yeah. to come home and take that out on me. And so I think that that loss of self worth mm -hmm. uh, uh, is tragic uh, in it. I think that there's a hopelessness uh, that can develop. And I believe that uh, I've heard some things regarding post traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. It's, a, it's one of the effects. Becoming that's a part thing. As, one, as one of the effects as well. Hey, guys, it's Pastor John here. Please, if you like this video that you just saw, hit that like button for us. Second thing I want to ask you to do is to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We're putting out videos once a day at about 5.30 p.m. Hit that bell notification so that you'll know when a new video has been uploaded. And then the final thing to do, share this video, share this information. If you know somebody that has a need that it can be benefited by it, please put it out in circulation so that we can try to help as many people as possible. Thanks and God bless.